Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on independent and dependent variables and covariates. In counseling research, it's important that we're able to identify variables. When we're constructing our research questions, we have to be able to know what variable is the independent variable, how many are there, how many levels does the independent variable have, and which variables are dependent variables. And of course, in models that have covariates, we have to be able to identify that as well. So I'm going to start by talking about independent variables and some of the properties that they have that will help you to identify them. The independent variable is a variable that is manipulated. Although there is an important exception to this rule that I will talk about in the next slide. It's presumed to have some effect on the dependent variable but may not always have an effect. Oftentimes, that is what we're testing, to see if there is an effect or not. In counseling research, it's often the treatment. So for example, say that you had a brief therapy that you believe to be effective in treating depression. The, that brief therapy used to treat depression would be the independent variable. Independent variables must precede dependent variables. So if you're ever looking at several variables and you're trying to figure out which one's the independent variable versus the dependent, remember that the independent variable has to occur first. And one independent variable may have many levels. So to give you an example, say that you are studying the effects of that treatment I mentioned before, a brief treatment for depression. And because the brief component is something that you're focused on, you have one level of the independent variable where participants receive uh, this brief therapy for six sessions, and another level where they receive it for 12, and yet another level where they receive it for 18. So that's not three independent variables. That's one independent variable with three levels, six weeks, 12 weeks and 18 weeks. Also in many research designs there's more than one independent variable and each independent variable can of course have more than one level. So in this next slide I want to talk about an important exception to the idea that independent variables are manipulated. Some independent variables are not manipulated but are measured. Uh, common examples are gender, age, height, and weight, because participants cannot be assigned a value for these variables. So if a participant comes into a study and they're age 45, you can't assign them to be age 60. Right? They're, not, they're not 60, they're 45. Similarly, if they're at a given height, say they're 5 foot 6, you can't assign them a value of a 5 foot. So in this instance, these are still considered independent variables, but they're not manipulated. They're measured. We simply measure the characteristics and proceed with the analysis as if the variable were an independent variable. Now, of course, it is an independent variable, but the manipulated and non-manipulated types of independent variables represent an important distinction when you're considering counseling research. Back here on this first slide, this is what we traditionally think of as an independent variable. It's manipulated and we're manipulating it to have some effect on a dependent variable. But as you can see, gender, age, height, weight, as well as many other non-manipulated independent variables could also have an effect on a dependent variable. So let's talk about dependent variables. Dependent variables are outcome variables. They are observed or measured. We presume that dependent variables are altered by the independent variables. So in counseling, dependent variables are often scores on psychometric instruments. And I have a few here, the WACE-4, the MMPI-2, the MCMI-3, and the SCL-90R. Of course, there's hundreds of others that are fairly common, 
uh, in counseling research. But when you're thinking about, okay, I'm looking at a certain variable, is it an independent variable or a dependent variable? If it's the result of a measure, it's likely going to be a dependent variable. Like if it's a score on you know, one of the scales on an SCL90R, right? that's likely to be a dependent variable. So in the case of the brief depression treatment, the, the counseling treatment for depression, that would be administered, that would be an independent variable, it would have three levels, 6, 12, and 18 weeks. And one of the scales on the SCL90R, for example, uh, is uh, depression. So we might look at that scale and that score and see if there was some sort of effect of the treatment. And that's how we know that that score is a dependent variable. Now, as I mentioned before, you can have more than one dependent variable in a study. So I have these four instruments. Of course, these four instruments all do something a little bit differently. Uh, well, in some cases, a lot differently. The WASTE-4 is an intelligence test. And the MMPI-2 is a personality inventory. Uh, the Milan is used for diagnosing, and the SCL is a symptom checklist. So all four of these instruments I have as examples do different things, but they could still all be administered in one study. So you can have more than one dependent variable in a particular research study. And of course, it's relatively common to have more than one independent variable. So to finish up, I want to talk about covariates. This is an important construct, especially when considering statistics that are used to analyze data in counseling research. Covariates are variables that covary with the dependent variable, but they are not a focus of the study. Covariates are continuous, that is, interval or ratio. Or if you're looking at SPSS, uh, it's called scale. The level of measurements is referred to as scale. In counseling research, covariates are often controlled using statistics such as ANCOVA, analysis of covariance. And covariates are generally considered different than factors. A covariate is continuous, and a factor is categorical. So you might be wondering, What's the importance of covariates? Why do we need to know what a covariate is? Well, oftentimes in counseling research, we know that there is a variable that we can measure that has an effect on a dependent variable. But that variable isn't the focus of the study, so we need a way to control for the effect of that variable on the dependent variable so that we can study the effect of another variable that is the focus of our study. So let me provi provide you an example. So let's say you are teaching counseling students and you have a dependent variable of uh, some test that's supposed to capture a lot of what's covered in counseling courses. And you know that, or you believe that, the courses that the counseling students take, uh, the actual teaching, has an impact, in this case a positive impact, on their score, on, on this measure that, that captures um, a lot of the things they're supposed to learn by studying counseling. So in this example, the independent variable is the teaching and, of course, the dependent variable is this large test taken at the end. Well, as counseling students come into counseling programs, they come in with different skill levels, meaning some of the students may be new to the counseling field and others may have experience, therefore they're familiar with the terms. So that experience level that students come in with into counseling programs is a covariate because we know that it has an influence or at least a relationship with the dependent variable. And we could, we could speculate that that 
that relationship is because if they have this experience, they're familiar with the terms, uh, for that reason they're going to score better uh, on the exam. Right? But that's not what we're studying. We're not studying is prior counseling experience predictive of higher scores on a large final exam. We're studying the teaching methods. So the prior experience is a covariate. And maybe uh, you would express it as months or perhaps years. Either one would be uh, a continuous level of measurement. So when you run a statistic such as uh, ANCOVA, ANCOVA controls for, in this case, experience, the covariate, and gives you information on what the effective effect is, if any, of the independent variable, the teaching method, on the dependent variable, which is this large comprehensive exam. I hope this video on independent and dependent variables and covariates was helpful to you. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.